So once again, the day is saved. Thanks to Just a Robot. Before I was a skeptic, or an anti-SJW, or a political commentator, whatever you want to call me, I was a cartoon reviewer on one of my older accounts. The channel really didn't go anywhere, but with the two gumball reviews I did recently, I discovered that people really like it when I combine a cartoon review with political commentary. And today I'm going to be talking about one of the most popular cartoons made by Cringe McCracker. The Powerpuff Girls. The original one, not the new version that a lot of people hate, or the Powerpuff Girls Z Japanese version. Or the really nicely drawn Dojin Shinto mango made by Bleedman. If you look at Bleedman's uh, art too long, you get put on an FBI watch list. Jesus Christ. The city of Townsville. An ideal city where everyone is satisfied with their lot in life. Where the citizens are happy to help each other out. Like these citizens. Hi, Professor. Going to school. Oh, girls, before you go, could you do me a favor? Certainly. Will you drop the garbage by the curb on your way out? So we have this really nice 1950s aesthetic where everybody's happy and they probably say gee willikers unironically. Of course, you can tell from a mile away that in about five minutes, everything is going to be pretty much the complete opposite. Because Powerpuff Girls is a lot of things, but it ain't subtle. You'll see what I mean throughout this review. Also, if you're wondering why Samurai Jack is in an apron and washing dishes, believe me, I've been asking myself the same thing for years now. A city where they always have someone they can count on. Yes, ma'am? The bank, huh? Don't worry, we're on our way. Oh, you girls are so sweet to take time out of your day to save the city. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did the mayor just call a female sweet? That's sexual harassment! I bet he also stare rapes people. I wonder what kind of hulking ugly thug of a man is robbing the bank this time. Whoa, man! That's right, you sad excuse of a man. You've been rendered completely helpless by a woman. Femme fatale. Wow. Where do I start? That's the least subtle thing I've ever seen in my entire life. It's about as subtle as a nuclear explosion. She has the female gender symbol on her gun and on her outfit. You know how in modern day cartoons like Gravity Falls and Adventure Time there's all these hidden meanings? Well, in the late 90s and early 2000s, there were no hidden meanings. The message was shoved into your face as violently as possible. What exactly? do you think you're doing? I, 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 I'm p putting the money in the bag. Men can't do anything right. Who is this? Who is this? It's Ben Franklin, you idiot! A man! I want Susan B. Anthony coins. Yeah, and while you're at it, put a black woman on the $20 bill. So you can tell by this scene that she's so obsessed with her female identity that she's willing to take Susan B. Anthony coins over $100 bills. There's not a man alive who can stop you. Uh-oh. Uh, you see what they did there? She said no man could stop her. But the Powerpuff Girls ain't men. They're girls. Ah, uh, it's great writing like this that gave the Powerpuff Girls six seasons in a movie. You're amazing. That's right, lady. And now you're coming with us to jail. Too bad your city belittles your talent, so. Belittles? That's pretty much how all gender studies courses start. What did you mean, belittle? Surely you've noticed. Female superheroes aren't nearly as revered as male superheroes. Sure they are. They're Supergirl, Batgirl. <sighs> They're so lame. Merely extensions of their male counterparts. Who besides you is a heroine in her own right? Huh. There's Wonder Woman and... Uh... Um... Now, this is a typical feminist tactic. They ask a female, Hey, do you know many women in this genre that you don't know too much about? And they do this because the average woman doesn't know too much about comic books and video games. But if you ask a woman who is into comic books about female superheroes, she can name about ten off the top of her head. She's right! There is no one else! <laughs> Where is she? It's your fault we lost her butterfingers. She's got roasted, son. Can't you girls see? The man can't 
admit we're better than him, so he keeps us down! Oh my god, I'm gasping that you guys found me even though I was talking while I was going into my hiding place! Listen to me, girls. You're on the wrong side. You girls protect your city just as well as Batman and Superman protect theirs. But do you have your own movie? This is another feminist tactic. They like to say things like, Haven't you ever noticed that most billionaires are men? But they fail to mention that most homeless people are also men. I'm in the same boat as you. Villainy, too, is a male-dominated field. Once you take me to jail, there'll be no more female villains in Townsville. Except for that little brat and the chick in the underwear, but they're in jail, so they don't count. Now she is technically right, but being in jail is also a male-dominated occupation. Also, while most of the villains in Townsville are males, they're not really human. Mojo Jojo is a monkey, him is a demon, the amoeba boys are, well, amoebas. You get the idea. <laughs> Did I mention this was made in the 90s? Because I don't think I made that clear enough. So, without the Powerpuff Girls to stop her, Femme Fatale goes on her stealing spree. Even though I don't really think she has any power, so I'm pretty sure an average officer could stop her, but, uh, they don't for some reason. But the Powerpuff Girls aren't doing absolutely nothing. They're keeping a very close eye on the boys. <laughs> What you did, Joey Finkelmeyer! What I do? Shut up! Now, this is contrast to an earlier scene where pretty much the exact same thing happened, but the Powerpuff Girls didn't do anything about it. Because after a gender study course, things that used to be average everyday life is now super problematic. Everything is sexist, everything is racist, everything is homophobic, and you have to point it all out. Oh girls, I'm glad you're home. I finally caught up on all the housework and all that's left is your room. If you could take care of that, please. Uh, I'll just do it later. Man, Samurai Jack became a total cuck after Ashi died. I'm more concerned as to why the doll was completely naked. Oh, it's that rotten mayor again! What do you want now? Miss Bellum! Why, of course, anything for you! Miss Bellum wants us to meet her at the mayor's office. She says it's important. Have a seat, girls. Oh my god, Miss Bellum! We're so surprised that you're here, even though you called us and told us you were going to be here, but we're still surprised about it for some reason. But the professor! Yeah, he wanted us to do chores! Oh, well, that is unfair. Making you do all the chores and not doing any himself. Uh, he was doing some of the chores. Actually, we only had to clean our own room. This sounds very similar to another feminist complaint. A lot of feminists complain how men, when they come home from work, they sit on the couch and don't help with the house chores. But here's the thing. The man has been at work all day. He's exhausted. But you gotta admit, things are unfair around here. I mean, there's only one female villain in the whole town. And you didn't stop her. That's right. We girls gotta look out for each other. Oh, really? Was Femme Fatale looking out for me when she stole from my bank? Was she looking out for me when she broke my arm? Was she looking out for me when she stole my hairstyle? Well, she did! Now, out of everything in this episode, this is by far the best part. There are feminists who I do like. Like Christina Hoff Summer, who's a choice feminist. She believes that women should make their own choices in life. But according to feminists like Anita Sarkeesian, choice feminism is just for women who want to use patriarchy to work for them. Over the past few years, I've become increasingly worried about the direction mainstream internet feminism appears to be headed, at least in the West. 
Um, unfortunately, many contemporary discourses in and around feminism tend to emphasize a form of hyper-individualism, which is informed by that neoliberal worldview. More and more, I hear variations on this idea that anything that any woman personally chooses to do is a feminist act. This attitude is often referred to as choice feminism. Choice feminism posits that each individual woman determines what is empowering for herself. Anita's type of feminism isn't looking out for all women. They're only looking out for a specific type of woman. And as soon as a woman steps out of line, she's no longer a part of their group. Susan B. Anthony coins, huh? Did you even know who she was? Uh, she was, uh, uh... Once upon a time, women weren't allowed to do much of anything. Susan B. Anthony knew that that was wrong. In 1872, she broke the law by voting, and even though she was found guilty, the feds wanted to go easy on her. Because she was a girl! And not send her to jail. <laughs> Susan B. Anthony didn't want special treatment. She wanted to be treated equally. She demanded that she be sent to jail just like any man who broke the law. <laughs> Wow, I actually learned a lot of things about Susan B. Anthony that I didn't know about before. It's funny that Powerpuff Girls taught me this and not actual feminist. Alright, what are my final thoughts on this episode? Honestly, this episode was pretty bad. While it did have a few good messages, they were about as subtle as Nicolas Cage. I know a lot of you are going to say that I'm taking it too seriously and it's meant for comedy, but even as comedies go, it's way too over the top. But what do you expect? The show was made in the 90s. My eyes have seen the glory of the cleansing of YouTube, debunking SJWs and feminazis too. We criticize reactionists in hopes they get the boot. Just the robot marches on. By the way, I first heard about this episode from one of Josh Gorcher's reviews. The review was on the My Little Pony episode over a barrel. And it was a collab with this guy named Jerry. I don't know that much about this Jerry person, but he seems like a very good friend of Josh Scorcher's. I gotta go check some more of his videos out.